Well, 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 it's Thursday, and as usual, we have our health correspondent, Leno Mudu. And, you know, today, again, I'm sure you're talking to us about a serious situation developing and not how another outbreak in Africa. Yes, indeed. And uh, the West African state of Cape Verde has been hit by a massive outbreak of dengue fever. The first cases were registered in the end of September with a sharp increase in the beginning of November. The Ministry of Health in Cape Verde is reporting more than 11,000 suspected cases of dengue. Four people have died from the mosquito-borne illness. And the International Diabetes Federation recently released the new figures showing a dramatic growth in the prevalence of diabetes, particularly in poor countries in North Africa. Diabetes is a form of glucose and sugar intolerance. The disease can cause blindness, kidney failures, uh, heart attacks, and strokes. It can sometimes be managed with diet and exercise, but many sufferers require insulin injections. And uh, joining us via phone to tell us more about the challenges of diabetes in Africa is Professor Jean-Claude Mbania, President of the International Diabetes Federation. Professor Mbania is attending the Pan-African Conference on Diabetes in Port Louis, Mauritius. So welcome to the program. Africa is uh, projected to have the highest percentage of uh, uh, the highest percentage increase in the next 20 years of uh, diabetes cases. How do you explain this fact? Yeah, in, indeed, Africa now currently would has about 12 million people with diabetes. And in the next 20 years, uh, there will be about 23, 24 million people. This is actually a 98% increase in Africa, the highest in the world. We have embraced industrialization. We have changed our lifestyles. We have become more urbanized. And given all these factors, we are developing diabetes more than any other continent in the world. And uh, basically, we see that industrialization is one of the, the causes. But uh, would you say that uh, also the lack of maybe medication or maybe better um, access to detection is uh, some, uh, some of the factors? I think, I think one of the other factors is that we are diagnosing them more. We are having more hospitals in the private and the rural areas. We are having health centers with more facilities to be able to diagnose diabetes. So we are picking up more and more cases. Industrialization, per se, is not a bad thing, but I think there are the consequences of economic development when people don't know that they have to be physically active, they have to eat a healthy, balanced diet, and that all fatty and fried things are not good for our health. And uh, now, what do you think that uh, could be the solution to maybe uh, reverse that? I think, I think the first thing is health promotion and increased awareness amongst the population. So much so that those who are at risk for developing diabetes, those who are obese, those who are physically inactive, those who have a fa positive family history of diabetes, and ladies who have had large, for large babies at birth, that they are prone to developing diabetes and that they have to either cut their weight or change their lifestyle. And secondly, we have to be able to develop our healthcare systems to be able to take charge of those who have developed the disease by provision of drugs and especially insulin to children who have type 1 diabetes. Now, uh, the Pan-African Conference on Diabetes is, uh, has just started today. That's where you are actually. Can you tell us some of the key issues on the agenda? Yeah, today we discussed about the global burden of diabetes. We also talked about diabetes in Africa, contrasted it with uh, the uh, Seychelles and then um, with Mauritius. And uh, this evening, we had the opening ceremony, and uh, the Prime Minister of Mauritius did announce that from tomorrow, all children with type 1 diabetes will have free meters and free testing strips for all their life. This is an achievement. And I think uh, we can learn from the Mauritian experience that although they have embraced all this economic development, they're putting in place structures in order to cater for people with diabetes by providing free medications and now free testing equipment for all children with diabetes. Well, um, Professor Mania, thank you so much for joining us. We sure appreciate your time today. Thank you. And that's your health report for today. Thank you very much. And I actually just uh, thought of what the professor said there, that I adapting, embracing the Western style of life and food has in fact increased the cases of diabetes. And others have said even hypertension, uh, obesity. Absolutely. Yeah. But in everything, you know, you have to, to weigh in the, the yeah. good and bad. And, and the bad. Really um, but I think be the point careful is, about <clears throat> the diet. Be careful and eat African authentic food. <laughs> well, <isn't it? laughs> among other things. Yeah.